on, everybody, and welcome to the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Podcast. I am your host, as always, Jamie Filer, and I am joined by Mr. Matthew Park. Uh, Matthew, how have things been? I feel like it's like looking in a mirror. We're both wearing the baseball tees. I've got the OG one. I want to make sure that it is not covered at all. It is so great to have you. Jim, I'm jealous. You actually have the original OG shirt. I don't have that one anymore. That's crazy that I own TRM clothes that are, I mean, honestly, we're looking at what, four or five years old? Like I don't, none of my clothes, this is the one thing that doesn't go out of style, Matthew. I think this is the only thing I own that that's still five years old. When you were wearing that on your last show that you won, I was like, I was so proud. I was like, look at father. She has her TRM gear, winning an overall title at her bodybuilding show two this, weekends in a row. This show has made it to every, this shirt has made it to every single, this is my tanning shirt. This is my victory. It's like super, the way some people grow a beard or wear the same underwear for playoffs. Like I always wear my I am limitless shirt to my bodybuilding shows. I have an idea actually for you. You know, are your plates on the wall? One day we should almost make like take that shirt. Oh my jersey. god, the way they you like know? like Kobe yeah. signed his jersey. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm in. I'm in. And then we could sell it to like a mentee that comes in maybe later. It's like one of the, the original. It's like you're gonna have the actual jersey on your wall signed by yeah. fitness. That's it. I'm here for it. Amazing. So should we get into the topic, sir? Let's do it, Jay Meister. Let's do it. Amazing. So guys, the reason that, well, we have Matthew on because he's incredible, but uh, the other reason that Matthew is my co-host today is because the topic of today's podcast is something literally very close to our hearts. And, and Matthew takes the cake when it comes to this topic is heart-centered excellence and heart-centered coaching. So how do we build a heart-centered coaching business that goes beyond just numbers and really makes a difference? You know, it's awesome, Jane, because I almost believe this concept has grown in TRM over the years into like something that actually is becoming more heard, more known, more recognized because of TRM over the years. We've grown our business with our clients, right? Yeah. So I want people to kind of realize Heart Center actually is not about being soft or it's actually about being you and authentic and strong in your in your place as a coach, but mm -hmm. in the way you want yourself to be. And it still involves numbers and metrics, but it also involves you know people, relationships, being the best version of you, being limitless, as she's wearing her amazing shirt right now. And if you look at our team, right, Jamie, Laurent, Isaac, the rest of our team that we have, Every one of, even Tani, all of our team members and leaders have grown in a heart-centered way in a different journey some of you guys, right? Yeah. That's heart-centered. Um, it isn't about just following someone else's path. It's actually kind of having this model, but being you within a model, right? And I think that when we share this, Jamie, more and more in TRM over the years is when they first play, see, they're like, oh my God, what does that mean exactly? Well, it really means being the best version of you as a coach to your clients, building a business that actually feels aligned to you. That's only you by yourself with a VA. Fine. Great. If it's you with three team members on your, on your coaching team, beautiful. So you have a gym, whatever that means to you, that's heart centered. Oh, I love that. I love that. So at the end of the day, it comes down to impact over income. But what I love about what you said, Matthew, is what heart-centered looks like to each of us is very different. And I totally respect that. So let's kind of dive in a little bit more. Um, how do you feel fitness professionals can develop deeper, more meaningful connections with their clients while scaling their business? Oh, great question, Jenny not putting them into a box. So having good questions that bring out what they want and who they want to be, who they want to be in their business and then helping them scale towards that, right? Is what I believe it actually comes down to because every coach that comes to us, Jamie and TRM, you know, you've coached many over the years. I've coached many over the years. We both have, have different visions. Some people have different visions, right? So it really comes into understanding what they want without putting them into a box or comparing them to coach A or B. 
yeah. and then getting into that version and being the absolute best person that they can be in that version for their family, right? For their children, for their dogs, for their partner, right? For themselves. So they can actually go out there and make a bigger difference. I love that. I think that's amazing. And then when it comes to scaling the business, you know, I can tackle that part. The truth is this comes down to, um, I learned this concept recently, the four D's yeah. do delete, delegate, defer. And I think that I'll say that again, do delete, delegate and defer. And as soon as you figure out your priorities within your business and what you actually need to do, it becomes that much easier to scale in order to do what Matthew said in terms of spending more time with your family, um, but also putting your client's needs first. Agree, Jane. Agree. I love that. And there's one thing that you do very, very well that we all, um, including myself, really get inspired by you on is your time management skills are incredible. Um, one of the best I've ever seen, you know, and the thing with Jamie is when she mentions those four D's, uh, you know, she does those things by the way, guys, which is actually heart centered because yeah. that's how, you know, she has that skill set that she's been honing over the years that we now can lean on right within TRM. That's her being her heart centered self. I was just going to say that. I think when you, you hear heart centered, it's my heart that I'm taking into account, but it's also my wife's heart because I want to be respectful of her time and energy and not let work bleed into my personal life. And then of course, also I want to consider the heart of my clients because this is their hard earned money that they've chosen to invest in me as a human being, but also my product and service. So heart centered coaching you're not the only one that is being considered here. There is an entire ecosystem of people um, that we want to take into account, who, whose hearts we want to take into account. Um, now, impact over income, heart-centered, core values mm -hmm. is another word that comes to mind, right? Because heart-centered in and of itself is a core value. So Matthew, what other core values or principles of a heart-centered coaching business do people need and, and how can coaches align themselves with those core values? Yeah, that's a good one, Jamie. I think it really, so there's two things here. There's the core values that, that align with heart-centered that can be a variety of core values here, but it will come into first identifying who you want to be or who you want to become in the journey of your coaching business. So for example, if your vision is to go from a solo coach at five figures to six figures, half a million dollars in your business, and you want to become that person, what core values in a heart-centered way do you need to embody, right? That are authentic to your soul and your heart and your mind, your body, and your spirit to get you there. Yeah. And so it's all coming into, yeah, it might seem like it's about compassion or empathy and client-centered. It's probably a lot of those things. But then, Jamie, you look at your journey as a coach, right? Like you've gone on this beautiful journey in the last five years as a coach to work with the person that you were when you first were in TRM. The person you are now is like a 360, a 360 at the end of the day, right? That's actually a heart-centered journey because you had to have some tough, you know, learning lessons. But then you evolved into this new evolution of yourself, which, as you said, other hearts were involved. Yeah. Clients, your wife, yeah. a team. And the whole nine yards. So I think it comes into identifying who, where you're yep. going, and then you work backwards to understand what is the three to five heart-centered core values that you must become or embody to get you there or be that person. So I would like to tell the podcast listeners my, or not just my three core, well, Filer Fitness is Jamie Filer. You know, Filer Fitness LLC is the same as Jamie Filer M.E., um, because if I ever operated out of alignment in either my business or my personal life, I would violate the other one, right? So the three core values of both business and personal are transparent communication, hardcore passion and detail oriented. And Matthew, as you just said, like one of my strengths is holding people accountable, right? So it's the same thing. Jamie Filer holds people accountable because she's detail oriented, but also the programs and protocols that Filer Fitness prescribes our clients are also detail oriented. So 
that is operating in alignment with heart-centered excellence. But it's the first one that I just want to take like 30 seconds to go over, transparent communication. Because without being clear, you are unkind. Mm -hmm. Again, in my relationship, if Katie and I ever skirted around an issue, if we were ever not honest, or if we omitted information that the other one should probably know, um, that's not heart centered at all, right? You wouldn't lie to your partner. You wouldn't, you wouldn't hide something from your partner. Well, why would you as a business owner or as an employee or as a solopreneur or as a coach ever not be completely transparent with a client, whether it's on a prospect call and you're not being honest about the refund policy, the cancellation policy, uh, how long the contract is, right? All of these things. That's not kind either, right? So clear is kind, transparent communication. That is a way for a heart-centered coach to A, scale the business, but also keep your core values in mind. That literally was a massive chunk of heart-centered coaching right there, Jamie. A heart-centered human being. Um, and it, you know what? Like you say, it's transparent communication, which actually I'm learning from you. We're all learning in that process. And it's something that it's like you said, it can be, you know, a thing that you want to bring up in a conversation with your partner or your teammate or your loved one or your friend, whatever. But yeah. man, that's a key thing. I love that you shared that because I think it's, it really embodies, it's not about this like thing that we think it is. It's actually a different angle that takes you to a different level in a better way. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, Next question, Matthew, that I want to dive into. Well, I guess before we move on, do you have any uh, core values that you've used within TRM that are also heart centered? So we have five core values in TRM and the first, and they literally all embody around heart centered at the end of the day. It's funny. We just talk about this actual concept. First one being integrity. Second being esprit de corps. Third being passion. Fourth being growth. And fifth being impact. And all five of those have a different embodiment of where we go as a team, right? It's about really a, a spirit of core team atmosphere of growing this business, but also having a growth mentality that we're, we're all here and better than each other. We're actually learning and growing at the same time. We're gathering information. We're having a growth mindset. But we're also having great passion and excitement about growing this impact with our clients as we're doing that. And then doing it in a way that, you know, things are not going to go as planned sometimes. Have the integrity to share those experiences. Where can we improve? That's also being heart-centered in a way that, listen, things may have to be improved or changed or modified or get that feedback or, boom, share that communication that you got to share. And all of a sudden, now things can be aired out. Boom, we can progress forward. So those are our five things. Amazing. Um, now, one that is really important, a core value, is authenticity. Yeah. So operating in congruence, in alignment, authentically, when you're on a sales call, when you're nurturing a client, if a prospect has left your ecosystem and maybe you're trying to bring them back, um, how do you communicate authenticity within your branding, especially in a world where it seems like you're communicating with a bunch of people, especially on social media, who, who aren't operating? under the same heart-centered, authentic, in the same heart-centered, authentic way? Man, this is a, this could almost be its own podcast, Jamie, that exact Oh, question. 100%. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, you know, th this is one that I think it starts off with really being true to your own story. I think people, some coaches who aren't being authentic, they try to follow a mold or a mask and being someone they're not. So they're being inauthentic online. Where when they really like one thing you've done well over the years is share your story very well, Jamie. I think I also have as well. And we both kind of have been able to share those things and also transparency. And listen, here's what we have as a coaching business, right? Here's how we work. Here's the clients that we've worked with, right? And, you know, we're kind of sharing the realness of the social platform as opposed to, you know, the uh, inauthentic way of what it may not align to, right? So I think it comes into with coaches is, AI is now prevalent. It's it's now in the industry. But then how are you conveying yourself and you know to people to still be human? To show your human side that you aren't a robot and you also make mistakes too and that you aren't perfect. But here's how we operate. Here's how we do business or here's how I live my life. I think that's because some people 
actually one mentor told me this actually years ago. Actually, it was actually Aaron Parkinson, by the way, told this to me three years ago. Okay. We were sitting down um, for at his home actually when I first came to Cayman. He says, brother, as you go your business, you're going to notice that, you know, as you align more to your authentic business self over time, you're going to have more people that don't actually, don't actually like you. And just know that you're going to have more people that actually will actually disengage from you, will either like actually have hate towards you. And that means that you're going in the right direction because whenever you have those who you actually have people that actually really love what you're doing. So yeah. huge fans. So that's, that usually is a sign you're going in the right direction. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, what are some practical ways to communicate authenticity and branding? Mm. I'd love to hear what you think on this one, Jamie. Anything come to mind for yourself, Jamie, on this one? Yeah. Yeah. And especially uh, hopping off the, um, or piggybacking rather, off what Aaron said about, you know, if you don't have haters, what are you doing? Um, yeah. My favorite compliment, Matthew, is when I hop on a sales call or even meet someone in real life, like at a pride event or in St. Pete, um, and they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're the same in real life. Or, oh, my God, I expected you to be different. And I'm not. I'm the same version they see in my stories or my reels. I dance the same at a rave. I am just as goofy when we go for coffee. Um, my sense of humor, like everything. So how do you communicate practical ways? Don't change. Whoever you're going to show up as on your sales call and on social media, that should be the same person you are in your living room. Okay. Maybe with a little bit more enthusiasm, slightly more charisma, maybe bringing some, some enhanced energy, but more of just an enhanced, like, like you turned the volume up on yourself rather than playing a completely different station, you know? So that's what I think is if I met this person in real life, would they be surprised? Would they be disappointed? Right? No. Cause it's the same, it's the same me. But what you shared there, Jamie is nice because you just said how when they meet you in real life, it's the same person they're seeing in social media. So that's just showing that as they learn about you or want to learn more about who you are as a person, they're, yeah. they're going to learn about that human being, whether it's you or me or anybody who are living in a heart centered way is that when they see you physically in real life for a whole day or a part day or a couple hours, like that literally, whoever that person is, that's heart centered, no matter who you are, you're so hard because you're actually being true to yourself. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, did you get a chance to think of one or was that, was that sufficient for you? I think that's sufficient for me. That just nailed, that's a one practical nugget right there. Yeah. Okay. So then Matthew, to wrap things up and, and make sure that people know that honestly, how we show up in TRM is going to be the same. Um, yeah. how does TRM specifically help fitness professionals either transition to heart centered coaching or implement heart centered coaching? Number one is we're always looking to improve ourselves. We don't say stagnant. We had a good call this morning, call this morning, we were talking about how to improve TRM. You know, yeah. I think part of being heart-centered in TRM is that we gather feedback. We are unique in our certain ways as coaches, as leaders, as mentors, as people in the company. And I want us to keep, you know, developing our skills so we can keep being unique uh, people in our within our skill sets, right? So part of TRM, you come in TRM is, there's no one person that overrides everybody else. It actually with all is free to core here in a yeah. certain category of strengths. And that's the way I wanted to have TRM from day one was a company that when you come in this community, you're like, oh, wow, we got Father, we have Nick Langer, we have Jace, we have Alvin, we have Isaac and Laurent, like this beautiful array of super awesome humans. Yeah. That, and there's no ego in competition when you're doing that. We're actually trying to elevate each other up at the same time. That to me is what makes TRM heart centered and we'll continue to get better towards that because when you see us in person and you see us online, we're going to be the same person, man, the same style of learning. You're just going to get a hug from us, probably a high five and probably a couple of jokes for me because I like joking once in a while. Yeah. And, you know, and then still being, uh, you know, having fun while you're growing at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And I think the other way that we teach is by leading, like you said, leading by example. You will meet the leaders when you eventually come to TRM, if you're not in TRM already, and you will have interactions with them. And then you will message them privately and you'll see that they're the same people. 
or you'll be in a breakout room with them and you will see that they are the same people for you that they are on their social media. Like when you take a personality like Jace Lopez or Nick Langer, who have a lot of authority in the fitness space, and then you meet with them, you know, whatever, four on one in a breakout room, and you'll see that they are as authentic as they are authoritative. Um, and I think that's a strength of TRM as well. Agreed, Jamie. Agreed. I think that strength and also the fact that all of us are always learning ourselves and we always try to get better as a team while we even outside of TRM to make ourselves better as a core, I think is really heart centered yeah. because um, we don't just think this is the end all to be all. It's like, yeah. no, we actually accept that we, we all have to learn and grow as a collective unit. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Any last words, Matthew, about either authenticity, heart centered coaching? Um, yeah. Anything, anything you want to leave people with? I would say that, you know, when you hear Jim and I talk about this topic, it's something that we're, we're definitely going to bring up more in TRM over the years. And it's one that we're just kind of getting the wheels turning with you. However, you look at your business, who you are as a coach, who you want to be in your business, how you want to grow your business, know that there is no race or competition. You go at your pace, you grow yeah. and challenge yourself, uh, learn from mentors, whether it's us or somebody else at the end of the day keep reading and learning and investing into your growth, but also know that when you screw up and make mistakes, you're going to, that's okay. That's totally okay. okay. Just yeah. get up and go, how can I learn to get better? And honestly, be on it, be open and transparent about it. If you mess up, let people know because they need to know you're not perfect so that the expectation for them to be perfect isn't there. Oh, that was great, Jamie. That's awesome. what we're going to finish right there. Perfect. All right. Where can you find us? What can you do for us? You can like, rate, share, and subscribe to this podcast. Leave us a five-star rating so that we can make sure to deliver value and gold nuggets like we did today. And in the meantime, uh, reach out to Matthew or myself at Trainer Revenue Multiplier on Instagram and Facebook. We respond to all of our messages. Until the next episode, have the best rest of your day, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, team. Take care, Matthew. Thank you for listening to the Trainer Revenue Multiplier show. If you love today's episode, head on over to Trainer Revenue Multiplier on the iTunes and Spotify and subscribe to the show today. Take a screenshot with your phone of this episode and share on your social media and let us know any questions you may have, things you enjoyed about the show or things you want to see more of coming down the pipeline and tag us at Trainer Revenue Multiplier on your social media. And if you are looking for more real money making, business building things to help you grow to the next level in your business, have your more income and have you working smarter and harder in your business, then head on over to trmshow.com to book your free 30-minute business building call today. We look forward to hearing from you, serving you, and of course, delivering more impact for your business. Have a great day. Take care. Let's keep growing.